Hey everybody, 40 Sparky here. Welcome to my video tip of the week number three, and I'm going to show you how to shoot film with your DSLR. No, I'm not going to show you how to physically modify your DSLR so you can actually run the film through it and actually expose it and take photographs. I'm going to show you how to set up your DSLR to best emulate shooting film. And I'll get to the reasons why you want to do this at the end of us set all the settings. First off, set your camera to either a manual or one of the th two automatic modes, aperture preferred or shutter preferred. If you're uncomfortable with manual mode or haven't learned it yet, don't be afraid to go to aperture or shutter. But just remember that a lot of cameras, the vast majority of cameras that were ever made, didn't have an automatic mode. So if you're comfortable with shooting manual, go ahead and put your camera on manual. If you're not comfortable with it, choose the aperture or shutter priority and learn how to adjust your exposure using that mode. If your lens has a focus ring on it, turn your autofocus off. Yes, there were 35 millimeter cameras that had autofocus, but again, just like the exposure, the vast majority of them didn't have it. So if you want that film experience, turn that autofocus off. The other thing is, we didn't have the, the vibration resistant lenses back in the film days. Never. So, off it goes. We can't use that VR. We can't use that as a crutch. Film only has one ISO. I can't take one frame and shoot it at ISO 400 and take the next frame and shoot it at 100 and then take the next one at 1600. Film has one ISO. So go into your camera man, menu and figure out how to shut off that auto ISO and pick one ISO. Pick one that is appropriate for what you plan on shoot. If you're going to be outside in the bright daylight, ISO 50 or 100 is plenty enough because you can get those film speeds. If you're going to be shooting in a low light, don't be afraid to go to 400 because that is also is an available film speed. But just pick one ISO and stick with it. Next you have to decide whether you're going to shoot color or shoot black and white. If you're shooting color, you have one white balance. Again, you can't change the white balance on film unless you're getting into filters, which is outside the scope of what I'm talking about here. So you have to pick one white balance. Usually color film is, is uh, set up for IS, or not ISO, for 5500K. So go into your menus, find 5500K, and set that in there. If you're shooting black and white, you'll need to go into the menus and find the monochrome or black and white option. And finally, since film cameras don't have a monitor on the back, you're going to have to turn the monitor on your camera off. This is on there for, on your DSLs, DSLRs for the purpose of saving on the battery power. But we can use it to, for this function so we can't chimp. There's no taking a photograph and looking at it and saying, oh, how did I do? Now, you're probably wondering, why on earth would I take all my money and buy a camera with all these functions and just turn them all off and cripple it and turn it into an old camera. Well, if you want the f to feel, get an idea of what it was like to shoot film back in those days if you've never shot film, this is a good exercise. And actually if you're shooting in manual with your manual focus and, and no way to know whether your pictures came out, you can learn a little bit better about photography. If you really want the experience, Take your memory card out and set it aside for two or three days. This will kind of uh, simulate the time it took for us to send our pictures to the lab and get them back. Then put them in the computer and look at them. And when you look at them, really study them. Did you select the right shutter speed? Did you select the right aperture? Did you select the right focus point? Were you figuring out the right ISO? Well, were you shooting ISO 800 out in the bright daylight and now you have very noisy or grainy pictures? So you can learn a little bit. Another reason you want to do this as an exercise is if you were thinking about going to film. This is a very, you know, it's a cheap way to get into the idea without actually buying a film camera. Sure, you could ask around. You might have a friend or a neighbor or a relative that has an old camera that they would let you use. You might even get lucky and have somebody say, well, hey, I've got this old camera down the basement or in the closet and I've never used it. If you want it, you can have it. Hey, that's great. But this will at least give you an idea of what it's like to shoot film without actually investing in film because some of us, quite frankly, we've got all our money wrapped up in the DSLR that we can. We don't have the funds available 
for shooting film. So anyway, that's how you set your camera up to shoot film with a DSLR. This is 480 Sparky. Go forth and actuate.